Wanna play? Wanna play? Wanna play? Wanna play? Wanna play? Wanna play? Hey everybody, welcome back to Wanna Play. My name is James McKenna and today is your lucky Friday because I'm bringing back the Friday uploads just for today because today you guys get a bonus video leading up to my massive ranking of all of the classic Universal Monsters horror films. I'm going to be ranking each individual franchise first. So the first one that I did was Frankenstein, that was on Sunday. And the next one I'm going to do, which you guys voted on, is going to be Dracula. But in the middle of those two, I decided, well, I've already pretty much seen all the Wolfman films because they're pretty much all in the Frankenstein franchise anyway, so why not just rank the Wolfman right now? So, without any further ado, it is time to rank all seven original Wolfman films. Now, there are two films in here that people probably usually don't count as part of the Wolfman franchise, that is Werewolf of London, the original from 1935, and also She-Wolf of London, but they were included in the Universal box set of the Wolfman film, so I decided to include them in this ranking. So, without any further ado, it's time to rank all of the Wolfman films. Let's get straight into it. So coming in in last place is going to be the same pick that came in last place in my Frankenstein ranking, that is House of Frankenstein. And pretty much for the same reasons, I mean, they, they kill off Dracula in the first, like, 15 minutes, which is all weird, and they introduce a new character who's just not as memorable as any other character, unfortunately, in the series, in, Doctor, in the Doctor's Hunchback who also, like, has kind of a weird, uninteresting love story, and the Doctor is played by Boris Karloff, who, for some reason, is in a Frankenstein movie, but not playing Frankenstein. It's the first one that has all of the monsters coming in. It has Frankenstein's monster, it has Dracula, and it has the Wolfman. But it's just, it's kind of uninteresting to me. It's the most bland out of the series. It's the most generic I feel like the Wolfman ever was. He's just kind of there to be like, oh no, there's a full moon tonight. You guys better kill me. I want to die. Like, that's pretty much all the Wolfman does in this movie. It's just, it, it's good because, I mean, obviously it's a universal monster movie. It's good, but it's not great. So for me, it comes in in last place. Coming in at number six was actually my last place pick pretty much throughout its entire runtime, all the way up until the ending, which I will be spoiling. So if you haven't seen this movie, and odds are you probably haven't, then skip over this entry if you are planning on watching it. That is going to be the last entry in the series, She-Wolf of London. Now, the reason why I was initially going to pick this for last place is because it's a werewolf movie where, where you don't actually get to see a werewolf. Like, pretty much all of it is just kind of implied, so it's like, why why isn't there a werewolf in this? Like, it's a werewolf movie, it's called She-Wolf of London, so why isn't there a wolf? But, it's revealed in the end, in one of my favorite twists of all time, that there was no wolf, it was actually just the house owner trying to, like, get rid of her niece from the house? It, it, they don't actually explain it really well, it's just like, it's a good reveal, like, this older woman was staging this whole thing, set it up, murdered all these people in the park, just so her niece can, like, lose her mind, think that she was doing it, like, she planted evidence, dirty shoes and stuff, made her think that she was going insane, and revealed that, actually, she was doing it the whole time. So it's a great reveal, but the thing is that this movie is an hour long, and it doesn't come until the last, like, five minutes. So for 55 minutes, you're just sitting there kind of like, what, what's going on? Like, how is, why isn't there a wolf? Why did they bring Jack Pierce, who did the makeup for The Invisible Man, onto this project and not actually have him do anything? But, of course, yes, the reveal is awesome. They don't really explain it, which is another flaw. She's just kind of like, yeah, I want you out of the house. And we don't really get to know why, but... Still, it's a cool movie, 
because of its twist ending, and I do think that its twist ending is one of the coolest twist endings there is, that there was no wolf the whole time, but the first 55 minutes just doesn't really stack up to the rest of the franchise, so for me, it's gonna come in at number six. Coming in at number five is gonna be House of Dracula. I think that this movie is okay, but it's kind of like House of Frankenstein, but just done a little bit better. It's the sequel to House of Frankenstein, and you do get all of the same characters coming back, but they treat him better this time. Dracula is again killed off, but instead of it being in the first like 25 minutes, it's in the first maybe 45 minutes, but you actually do get the introduction of the Mad Doctor, who I think is one of the most unique characters in all of the Universal Monsters films, and honestly, I'm just, I'm sad that he never got his own franchise because he is great in this movie, and I'm glad they decided to focus on him more than the Wolfman or Frankenstein's monster or Dracula because I feel like this story revolving around him makes it better because it makes it more, I guess, realistic of how these characters all come together. The Wolfman seeks out the Mad Doctor to summon Frankenstein's monster and then, like, to kill him to find a cure and it's just pretty cool. I mean, Frankenstein, for as little as he in it, he has some cool scenes, but overall, Again, it's a good movie, it's got moments, it's got one of the coolest characters, but it just doesn't stack up to the rest. So in my opinion, House of Dracula comes in at number five. Coming in at number four is gonna be Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Now this movie wasn't as good as I was expecting it to be, but it was still epic. I mean, it's, it's, Frankenstein's monster and the Wolfman coming together and fighting. It's the first real big crossover between these universal monsters. And it's also the movie that really made me fall in love with the Wolfman character and Lon Chaney's portrayal of him because he's just, he's played to be such a sympathetic character in this one. And it's just, it's awesome how this movie was written, like seeing the struggle of this guy and just how badly he wants to be cured and and even to the point where like he wants to die and he seeks out Dr. Frankenstein to find a cure to kill him but within that seekage he accidentally brings back Frankenstein's monster. Now Frankenstein's monster is kind of where the problem of this movie is because Bella Lugosi plays him and although Bella Lugosi is freaking awesome in literally everything ever this character Frankenstein's monster isn't I guess it's just not fit for him because he just doesn't really have the best portrayal of the monster, especially when compared to like Glenn Strange and freaking Boris Karloff. He's good, but he's just, he's more robotic than the rest. He doesn't really have a natural walk to him, but the ending of course is classic. The fight between the monster and the wolfman, like hell yeah, this is a dream fight, especially back then when these movies were released, people would come up with these scenarios like what would happen if the Wolfman fought Frankenstein and well, now we know. So this movie's great, but it does have that one slight flaw in, I guess, having the weakest portrayal of Frankenstein. But it's still awesome and it's awesome enough at least to boost it up here at number four. Coming in at number three, we've got The Wolfman. A tale as old as time. You're walking through the woods in the middle of the night, as one does, and you stumble across a random gypsy woman, as one does, and the gypsy woman is also chilling with Bella Lugosi, as she would be, and she puts a curse on this normal dude, Larry Talbot. And now every time the moon is full, he comes out as a wolf, and starts killing everybody and it's great just the simplicity of that the dude's walking through the woods he gets cursed and now he's a wolf cool he's an awesome character Lon Chaney is just perfect like they could not have casted a better actor for this like honestly the wolfman might just be the best casted universal monster of all time I mean Dracula 
Yeah, maybe Dracula with Bela Lugosi, but still. He's a close second, we'll say. He's a close second. And this movie's just great. Like, they couldn't really do, like, transformation effects, like, you know, in The Howling or in American Marvel from London. So they had to get creative with it, and I think that they did a really good job with the effects. Just, like, having it hold still on Lon Chaney, Larry Talbot, and just have it slowly fade as the makeup gets heavier and heavier. And now the dude's just in a full-blown wolf outfit. And it's also funny that he's not just a full-blown wolf, he's... A, still a dude he's walking around like a dude and he's still got like his jeans on and he's just running around killing people but with the wolf makeup on this movie's just great it's a whole lot of fun it's one of the best universal monster films there is and it's got to come in at number three coming into number two is a movie that i really didn't know anything about besides that it was a werewolf movie going into it and one that i was shocked by how good it was that is the original Werewolf in London from 1935, the first movie in this series, and it's just great. If you take away the fact that this movie has the most stereotypical, snobby British people ever written ever, this movie is legit awesome. Honestly, I think that this might be controversial to say, but the makeup here for the wolf in this film might just be better than Larry Talbot's makeup. It, it looks awesome, it looks more realistic too, and this werewolf also has kind of its own set of rules. Like, this is in a different universe from most werewolf films, and it has its own set of rules which makes it unique and makes it stand out more. For example, one of the rules is that if you don't kill at least one person while you're in wolf form, you'll stay a wolf forever, so you know that you're gonna get at least some cool kills while the dude is in wolf form even though it's only 1935 and some cool kills you get also even though i just praised the original wolfman for having some cool and creative effects for its transformations this one honestly might even be better because it's just done more creatively and flawlessly basically the first time we see him transform he walks by a pole and it cuts, it pretty much fades to black and there's a cut. You don't even notice, it's just, it's going by a pole. And every time he walks by a pole, he gets more and more transformed. And then he walks by another one and he's more transformed. And he walks by another one and he's more transformed. It's really cool and it's pretty creative. And there's also that adorable dog in that one scene on like the stairs in the background, which... Wait a second. Dude. Is he... Dude, are you in this movie and just didn't tell me? What? Huh. Guess, guess this dude is a movie star. Good for you. Didn't know. And one last thing is that I like how this wolf is still smart. He's not as smart as a human being, but he's smarter than, for example, Larry Talbot's wolf man because he'll be like standing behind buildings and he'll kind of like set traps and wait for his prey and do stuff that kind of humans would do if they were out to kill people except in awesome wolf makeup so this movie was a pleasant surprise and just how good it was and for me it's gonna come in at number two. But at number one, of course, is Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. I talked about this movie in my Frankenstein ranking and why I love it so much. It's because it takes all of the characters, Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, puts them in a movie, puts them in a movie with Abbott and Costello, makes it a horror comedy, but keeps the villains serious. Like, the villains aren't turned into jokes here even though the rest of the movie is chock full of jokes. And also, I mean, it's it's Bela Lugosi playing Dracula for the only other time in his entire career than in 1931, and he's literally one of my favorite actors in horror movie history. I mean, Dracula is my fifth favorite horror movie of all time. That's where I believe I ranked that film. I mean, I yeah, I love me some Bela Lugosi as Dracula, and we get some, like, fight scenes between Dracula and the Wolfman and Frankenstein, and there's even a bit in the end where 
the Wolfman like grabs Dracula who just transformed into a bat and honestly a really cool effect because you kind of like see it happen and he grabs the bat and he swanton bombs off a cliff with him. Hell yeah! And then of course in the end as I mentioned in my Frankenstein's ranking, the Invisible Man shows up in a cameo appearance. This movie is awesome. This movie is one of my favorite horror movies. I mean I gotta be honest, it's my number one pick for best movie in the entire Wolfman franchise. Might be controversial, but I gotta be honest. So, Abbott and Castell means Frankenstein comes in at number one. So thank you for watching my ranking on all seven Wolfman films. Let me know your ranking of this series in the comments down below. And I will be doing Dracula next, but let me know what you want to see after that. I also have The Invisible Man and The Mummy. I also have The Creature from the Black Lagoon to do, but that's probably going to be like maybe even on my Instagram page or something because there's only three of those films so I will be ranking them but it might not be here on YouTube it might be on Instagram and when I do post that I will obviously make a community post and announcement for if you guys want to go check that out but until then I want to thank you guys for watching this video as well as probably if you checked out this video you probably also saw my Frankenstein ranking and stay tuned for my massive ranking on all of the Universal Monsters. You can subscribe to this channel if you would like to, and you can also follow me on Instagram at James from Wanna Play. But you don't have to go, but thank you for watching this video anyways. Goodbye and good night. Bang!